Hi, my name is Yves Zimmermann. Today, I have the pleasure to present some of the highlights of our recent publication in Transactions on Robotics. One of the key challenges in automation is the collaboration between automated systems and the human co-workers. To date, most of the robots still operate in strictly separated workspaces from humans. However, today I will introduce a powerful robotic system that is built to intimately engage with humans. Before we get into the technical details, let's assess the question of what motivated us to develop such a device. There are different medical conditions and traumata that can lead to injuries of the central nervous system. Often, these injuries lead to impairments of the motor function. Stroke is one of the major causes with high incidence, particularly in the elderly population. Neurotherapy involving functional movement therapy enhances the recovery process. However, there are not enough therapists to provide sufficient treatment to the patients. With high incidence rates in the elderly population and aging population, this challenge will get even more eminent. Robots like the upper limb exoskeleton in the image were developed to automate physical interaction and exercise setups, provides a high amount of repetitions, standardized interventions, data-driven decision-making and combined therapy with digital entertainment. These achievements could be demonstrated by various studies. However, these devices had substantial limitations. Movements close to the body were often not possible, even though these are highly important for the early rehabilitation process. The supported movements were restricted due to missing degrees of freedom, interactions with real objects during training was not possible, and robots were not fast enough for treatment with moderately affected patients. Therefore, we looked into developing a new exoskeleton to overcome these challenges by developing a new kinematic structure, defining the human-robot attachment and novel algorithms to control the interaction between the human and the robot. The kinematic structure was developed with the goal to include all relevant joints of the human arm, provide ergonomic movements and cover the range of motion uh, humans require for activities of daily living. The human arm can be modeled with nine degrees of freedom the sternoclavicular, the glenohumeral, the elbow, and the wrist joint. All these joints were included into the robot. The glenohumeral joint was the most challenging to develop as the head and the torso of the user are close and the range of the shoulder is very large. Therefore, to reach the best manipulability, we chose three sequential actuators orthogonal to each other. In the undeflected position, the arm of the user is aligned with the middle of the range of motion that is required for activities of daily living. Thereby, the best manipulability is achieved. The sternoclavicular joint contributes around one-third of the overall range of motion of the shoulder. The robot should support patients in recovering this healthy scapular humeral rhythm. Therefore, we coupled the elevation and depression movement with the angle of elevation of the upper arm to follow the pattern of unimpaired humans. Similarly, protraction-retraction was coupled to the plane of elevation movement of the upper arm. Now let's have a look at the quantitative achievements. This graphic depicts the plane of elevation from left to right and the angle of elevation from bottom to top. The internal external rotation is indicated by the angle of the arrow on each point of the grid. With this green shade, we can indicate the range of motion in plane of elevation and angle of elevation. In addition, we can display the angular segments to depict the internal external rotation range of motion in a coupled fashion to the other two degrees of freedom. We can use color coding to indicate the manipulability. Interesting to see here is that the manipulability is higher in the middle of the range of motion as the sternoclavicular joint contributes. When displaying the range of motion of humans in purple, we see that the robot covers the required space. Compared to not using the shoulder girdle here indicated with this uh, brown line and compared to the state-of-the-art devices like for example the Armin 3, the range of motion of any exo was substantially increased on the one hand by the kinematic design of the robot itself, but as well by incorporating the sternoclavicular joint into the movements. We can see that uh, smooth movements proximal to the body as well as far-reaching movements are possible. Note that this robot can provide 80 Newton meters at the shoulder and 20 Newton meters at the wrist. Now to the topic of human robot attachment which had to be revised to provide complete and consistent support, allowing for real object manipulation and body proximal activities, while being simple to use. 
Conventional attachment systems use one contact point per segment on the arm, which leads to weak constraints between the human and the robot. In our updated design, we enable interactions with the environment and with the own body by an open hand concept. Uh, we improve the connection between the robot and the human by having two contact points at the forearm, two contact points at the upper arm, and by using um, contact a haptic reference at the upper torso. The resulting attachment is easy to use. Once the length of the robot is adapted to the user, it is even possible to attach oneself to the device using a free arm. Thereby, a patented passive lever and tandem mechanism adapts the size of the attachment mechanism so that the position of the arm with respect to the robot remains constant, independently of the arm's diameter. The system enables accurate replication of positioning so that the least resistance occurs due to misalignment. Further, the self-adapting of the outer footprints enables to place the contact points closer to the joints while retaining a large range of motion. With the new kinematic structure and attachment, the device was ready to support a diverse set of activities, here demonstrating only a selection of those. For example, perennial care, where we reach uh, very low numbers in plane of elevation, which is exceptional under the exoskeletons, or interactions with the own head, uh, where, for example, we simulate here washing hair, um, which basically uh, interacts um, moving with the, head, uh, with the hand around the full head and the face. But we can also do fast movements, like for example, an overhand or an underhand throw, shown here. But also very intricate movements, like for example, screwing in a light bulb, where it's uh, vital to have a very uh, precise rotation around a certain axis. Now to a brief glimpse into the controls of the device. To meet the requirements, we want to display high quality free space movement, and high force interactions with virtual walls. This while operating safely in proximity of the human and as well um, for allowing a very intuitive modular implementation of control methods that define what kind of interaction we want with the human. To achieve intuitive and modular control implementation, we use hierarchical quadratic programming to merge the individual tasks into the command for the actuators. To feedback linearize the closed loop system, we use a precise model of the robot and measurements of the interaction forces to the human. We could demonstrate that this feed forward compensation achieves on par performance with state of the art closed loop systems in comparable robots. The advantage that was leveraged here is the precise torque control provided by our series elastic actuators. However, to compensate parts of the inertia of the robot as well, we employ closed loop policies using the measured interaction forces between the human and the robot. Therefore, the robot implements six degrees of freedom for its torque sensors at each of the contact points to the human. For simplified tuning and robustness against length changes of the exoskeleton, we normalize the control output using the mass matrix. Thereby, we could achieve highly transparent behavior, even in the presence of dynamic movements of the human. Here we demonstrate it by throwing darts. By the way, without the robot, I'm not really much better at this. However, what is interesting to see here is that the gravity of the robot fully gets compensated by the feed-forward model, while the inertia gets to around 50% compensated by the closed-loop um, models that, that we run. To conclude, with our new exoskeleton design, we could overcome the mentioned challenges. We can now train body proximal movements, all of the human arms, degrees of freedoms were included, and we can train and uh, perform activities of daily living, including interactions with the environment. Further, the robot is also applicable for moderately affected patients who want to recover speed and use the robot with uh, much higher velocities. Due to the limited time, I had to skip many highly interesting details of this development, which was basically the final product of my PhD. If you're interested in learning more, I'm very happy to talk. Thanks for your attention.